campers, no one beats R&R, undefeated in the camper sale business. Looking for some fun this summer? Then go to Splash in the Borough. It's a water park with something for everyone's thrill level. Try the giant trio slides that twist and turn, then plunge you into a pool of water, or the five-lane mat racer towering nearly five stories above the water park. And for the ride of your life, try the only dual flow rider in Georgia. Next, test your balance skills on the lively lily pads, and then uh, relax in the 800-foot winding lazy river. And for the little kids, there's a 6,000-square-foot spray ground with tot slides, water sprays and a wading pool kids under 48 inches get two dollars off and kids two and under get in free splash in the borough is open daily beginning on saturday may 28th until august 7th then weekends through labor day admission price is just twelve dollars and 99 cents certain rules and regulations apply flowrider has an additional charge local news on wifo It's time now for the latest in local news. In the news, Big Dog Country Velocity Health and Fitness Cash Can has been fined. The winners will be on the World Famous Pitch and Vibe show this Friday. Lucky winners, Carl Sawyer, Kevin Sharp, and Kerry Knighton. They walk away with $1,055. Cash fan was fined this year at the Farmer's Market. You know, congratulations again to Carl Sawyer, Kevin Sharp, and Kerry Knighton. They'll join us Friday on the Pitch and Bob show to talk about the search for the can. Also in the news, WI Fulfilm continues to follow the GBI investigation into the alleged misappropriation of funds at the high school, which has led to the arrest of former AD and head football coach Jody Grooms, his wife Sharon, who headed up the cheerleading program at the high school. WI Fulfilm has talked with District Attorney Jackie Johnson and says the GBI investigation is ongoing. And since the arrest of the Grooms, more complaints have been filed by other parents and students involved in the program. DA says once the investigation has been completed, the investigation will be turned over to the DA's office, and the DA will present the case to the grand jury to seek indictments. Meanwhile comes the story of the weekend that a tractor belonged to the school system that has been missing since December 19, 2015, when it disappeared from a storage shed at Arthur Williams Middle School, has been recovered by police this past Sunday afternoon at 3.40 p.m. after police received an anonymous call stating that someone had spotted the tractor parked in a wooded area behind Jessup Elementary School. The report states that the tractor has been, was seen Saturday morning, May 28th, and the person who spotted the tractor told a member of the maintenance staff at church on Sunday that he believed that was the school's tractor. The maintenance employee called police. Police recovered the tractor on Sunday afternoon. Again, the John Deere 955 tractor recovered by police Sunday afternoon at 3.40 p.m. Again, that tractor has been missing from the school system since December 19, 2015. And from all reports, that tractor just recently was left in the area behind Jessup Elementary. It had not been there for a long period of time. Once again, the investigation into the misappropriation of funds continues by the GBI. More complaints coming in as the investigation is ongoing. The BIFO family will continue to follow the story as it develops. The school system still waiting on the state audit exit report. So they still have not received that as the state auditors were asked to look into these allegations of misappropriations of funds. The school system on record saying that if the funds were taken, they will take the necessary steps to have those funds returned to the school system. Wayne County Superior Court in session this week on Tuesday. 35-year-old Harold Dasher pled guilty to possession of cocaine, receives a six-year prison sentence from Judge Wilkes. Charges stem from an arrest back on July 5th of 2015. Dasher pled guilty on Tuesday in court, again receives a six-year sentence to be served in prison. Jury selected Tuesday for a criminal damage to property case as Rodolfo Blanco is charged in the case. The victim is wife, Brandy Blanco, as the charges that he intentionally damaged the vehicle's driver's side door of her vehicle, damaged in excess of $500. Again, the case not able to be settled. Heads to a jury trial beginning this morning. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor and other commercial messages, so please stay tuned. For over 60 years, Altamaha Federal Credit Union has been a part of our community. Folks you know and trust, always here when you need us. We're celebrating our 60th anniversary by bringing you better ways to handle your money. By updating our system and implementing great new features and benefits to you, like an automated phone number that allows you quick, safe, and easy access to your account 24-7. The ability to transfer funds and send money to anyone with just a few simple steps. The security of e-statements, no more hard copies through the mail, and you can set up text alerts that give you instant information about your account. Here's to another 60 years of making life easy for our members. More community involvement and continuing to be more efficient, safe, secure, stronger, and better than ever. Drop by any time or visit us online at altamaha.org and join us today to reap the benefits of a financial institution that's run by hometown people with a hometown attitude towards service. Come home to Altamaha Federal Credit Union, Jessup, Ludowisi, and Scriven. 
Advanced Healthcare Center and Spine Institute in Jessup is your complete wellness clinic, serving Wayne County and the surrounding area for over 25 years. Advanced Healthcare combines excellent medical, chiropractic, physical therapy, acupuncture, and massage therapy providers working together as a team to get you well and enjoying life as soon as possible. They have state-of-the-art diagnostic and treatment options on site, including digital x-rays, ultrasound, nerve testing, durable medical equipment, laboratory, and much more to properly diagnose and treat your condition effectively. They accept most all major insurance plans, motor vehicle and workman's comp injury cases, and provide same-day appointments for your convenience. Advanced Healthcare specializes in the treatment of spinal pain, arm and leg pain, joint and arthritis pain, and headaches. Medically supervised weight loss with genuine HCG tablets or prescription medications are available as well. Your health is their business. Advanced Healthcare and Spine Institute in Jessup, health for life. Chesapeake City Commissioners met Tuesday in a work session at City Hall Council Chamber to discuss several items, including their budget, which they will look to approve before July 1st. All seem happy with the final version of the budget that they will look over and approve in the next couple of weeks. They have set up a meeting for Friday morning at 9 a.m. at City Hall. Highlighting the budget is a proposed increase in pay for all city employees across the board, something that has not occurred in several years. City looking at a 2 to 2.5% 2 increase across the board. This issue came up for discussion at their retreat earlier this year on Jekyll Island. The issue of the city police officers' pay brought the issue to light. Several council members stated in order to attract good officers, the pay scale has to be competitive with other cities of our size. Too many officers going through the city training program and not staying long before they take a job with the county or somewhere else. They hope by being competitive with the salaries that they can keep and attract good officers. Several long-time just police officers closing in on retirement and the city trying to address the issue before it becomes a major problem. Main reason for the call meeting on Friday morning at 9 a.m. is to decide what action, if any, the commissioners want to take regarding their insurance third-party carrier group insurance who refuses to pay a $350,000 claim on an employee who had cancer. City Attorney Michael Connor says the city can do nothing and receive nothing or sue the carrier and hope to receive payment. Connor says an insurance case has little chance of going before a jury. He says he recommends the city take some type of action. Commissioners looking to fire the carrier as well. After the meeting, WIFOFM talked with City Manager Mike Deal, who discusses the issue facing the city. Yeah, we, we have an issue, and I, I'm not going to go into it uh, in detail because uh, we do have a claim. Uh, we think we have a claim with uh, a couple of companies, and I'm not going to get into that at all, but uh, we have an issue where we have a claim that's not been paid, and we felt like we were insured for that claim, so we're, we're looking at uh, uh, getting a new third-party administrator for our local insurance, our health insurance with the city of Jessup. Pretty heated discussion. The disappointment is, and like I said, you're paying this company $250,000 a year to make sure those claims are paid and overlook it, but apparently something was missed or somebody dropped the ball. Yeah, and it, it will all go down to the contract, what's written in the contract, and we feel like uh, either our reinsurer or our third-party administrators at fault, and I guess that'll be a decision for the court to decide. They, they've done a really good job for us in the past keeping our claims down, and, and you know, they do have a big job. They they uh, they get us a lot of discounts and, and that sort of stuff on, on medications and on uh, uh, insurance claims that goes to the hospital. You know, an insurance company pays uh, a discounted rate from what you or I would do if we were not insured and go to the hospital. And uh, it, uh, they do, they have a pretty big job, and uh, they've done a really good job for us. But somebody dropped the ball on this one, and we're uh, trying to decide basically where we go with a new TPA, third party administrator, or, or uh, we stick with the same one and we get in a lawsuit with them. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of a touchy issue, but we'll, we'll, uh, I think we can uh, come up with the best decision for the city. And that decision will be made at the Friday meeting, 9 o'clock in the morning, is that correct? That's correct, Bob. We'll, uh, we'll look over all the, all the issues we have and try to make the uh, best choice. Both Mike McGoy and Sean O'Quinn were at the work session Tuesday, stating they were puzzled as to why the carrier won't pay the claim. Here was Mike Malloy addressing the commissioners on Tuesday. So the question is, when were the checks sent to the city of Jessup? And that, that question's been asked of group resources by the city's attorney and myself on multiple occasions. And, and I have yet, or he has yet, to receive any correspondence that documents when they sent those checks to the city. So we don't have any, we don't have any, any uh, documentation to verify when the checks were sent, okay? So therefore, they're denying the, 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 the payment. Where I, I think, 
court and we can sure seek your legal counsel's advice on it is that if the checks were in the mail in fact in the mail then the reinsurance carrier is responsible for those checks okay if and so, so there's some fault there and then we need from group resources if, if they did what they were supposed to do and mailed the checks in a timely fashion which they said they did then why don't we have documentation to support that Commissioner Ray House, very upset about the issue, had to be asked to control his language several times as in his discussion he let several expletives slip, to which Commissioner Don Darden asked him to watch his language. House simply told Darden that he had surely heard worse in the military, to which Darden stated, quote, I'm not in the military at this moment, end quote. Here was Ray House discussing the situation and making his feelings known about how he felt. I'm just as pissed off as I can be. I mean, we've done business with these folks all this time. And this is how we get treated. They, they really dropped the ball on this, but, and I could go without saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. They have done an outstanding job for us in managing their clinic. Do you agree? I do, yes, sir. Uh, I've been really impressed with the job they've done since, since I've been back over here. But, you know, they really dropped the ball on this, and they won't pass up to it. Once again, the commissioner set to meet on Friday morning at 9 a.m. to make a decision on which way to proceed regarding the group health insurance carrier who won't pay the claim. Keep in mind that this carrier is paid $250,000 a year by the city to oversee the city's claims, and city manager says in this recent history they've done a good job. Why they won't pay this claim has the city puzzled, and again, a decision will be made on Friday which way to respond. Also at the work session, a 20-page record service ordinance that the commissioner is looking to implement with rules and guidelines making sure that those that run a record service have a permit to operate a vehicle and that all have pool yards to store the vehicle. City attorney says several situations have occurred in the city when someone gets in a wreck, their, vi they'll I'm sorry, their valuables or medication is in their vehicle, and they have no idea where the vehicle has been taken. Also, the city had a vehicle wrecked recently, and a company charged the city $350 to tow the vehicle and $25 a day to store the vehicle. The city got hit with a $475 bill, which the city manager was not happy with. The city wants an ordinance in place that all record services can abide by and work with the city. It was stated that the three record services in the city limits are all abiding now by the guidelines, but several outside the city limits seem to be the problem. Once again, the ordinance in front of the commissioners for their consideration and vote at their next scheduled board meeting. And that's a look at your work session from Tuesday. We'll come back with some final news notes right after this word from our sponsor, other commercial messages. So please stay tuned. For over 60 years, Ultimaha Federal Credit Union has been a part of our community. Folks you know and trust, always here when you need us. We're celebrating our 60th anniversary by bringing you better ways to handle your money, by updating our system and implementing great new features and benefits to you, like an automated phone number that allows you quick, safe, and easy access to your account 24-7, the ability to transfer funds and send money to anyone with just a few simple steps, the security of e-statements, no more hard copies through the mail, and you can set up text alerts that give you instant information about your account. Here's to another 60 years of making life easy for our members. More community involvement and continuing to be more efficient, safe, secure, stronger, and better than ever. Drop by any time or visit us online at ultimaha.org and join us today to reap the benefits of a financial institution that's run by hometown people with a hometown attitude towards service. Come home to Altamaha Federal Credit Union, Jessup, Ludowisi, and Scriven. Hello, my name is Chad Neesmith from Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC of Jessup. At Neesmith, we had the biggest inventory of new and used vehicles around. We also had the best prices guaranteed. We know everyone wants the best vehicle at the best price. At Neesmith, we'll give you just that. We sell all makes and models from Lexuses, Nissans, BMWs, and of course all GM and domestic cars too. Best of all, if we don't have the vehicle on the lot you want, we can get it for you in just a day or two, tops. All we ask at Neesmith is before you buy to give us a chance to save you some money. We will have the best prices and give you the most for your trade guaranteed. So don't pay too much. Come and see us today and let us show you how we can get you into the vehicle you want at the lowest price, guaranteed. Only at Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC of Jessup on Highway 341 towards Brunswick. Or visit us online at NeesmithNow.com. That's NeesmithNow.com or at 912-427-2045. There ain't nothing wrong with the right price. A couple final notes of news. Altamont Community Theater presenting their play Willie Wonka Jr. Showtimes Thursday and Friday, June 2nd and 3rd at the K. Cagle Theater at the high school. Showtimes each night, 6.30. Admission price, $7. Over 30 kids ranging from age 5 to 14 have been working hard getting the show ready. Again, it's all for your entertainment this Thursday and Friday, June 2nd and 3rd at the K. Cagle Theater. Once again, showtimes are 6.30. Admission price, $7. Seats are first come, first serve. And don't forget this weekend, the Wayne County Catfish Tournament is still time to sign up and get in. Entry fee for the events $100 per fisherman with a minimum of at least two fishing in a boat. Big Fish Pot is 
Entry is $10 per fisherman. Again, the weigh-in and tournament headquarters are once again at JC Fairgrounds at JC Landing. Those fishing the event can put in anywhere on the Ultima River, but they must be in line at weigh-in at JC Fairgrounds by 2 p.m. Sunday. This year's event offers anglers the opportunity to win up to $7,500 in payout. Prices based on a number of entries into the event. Once again, the registration form can be done online at active.com or can be dropped off at the Tourism Board office in the depot. Registration pack is available at most bait and tackle stores at the train depot, also at Odom and Scriven City Halls. Need more information, call the Tourism Board office at 427-3233 or check out their website at waynetourism.com. Again, the Wayne County Catfish Tournament is set for June 4th and 5th here in Wayne County. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan saying have a great day. You've been listening to local news on WIFO. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties for over 13 years. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the only nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our new administrative offices, located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard, have opened recently as phase one of our building project. Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria, regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak to someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice, and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia, working to add life to your days. Good morning, everyone. We're waking up to partly cloudy skies and temperatures this morning near 70 degrees. As we move through the day, you're going to get to see some sunshine. Highs will be in the upper 80s, low 90s, with a few stray showers or an isolated storm in the afternoon. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low near 70. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we'll see sunny skies, stray showers, or isolated storms in the afternoon with highs in the upper 80s and low 90s. I'm Georgia meteorologist Laura Huckabee in the GNN Weather Center. Encore Music Festival, Saturday, June 25th in Jessup at the J.C.'s Fairgrounds, starring Corey Smith, Straight out of Nashville. Lance Stenson, John Langston, Crystal Hopkins, and the Battle of the Bands winner. Advanced general admission, $20. VIP tickets, $40. At EncoreMusicFestival.com, Sybil's Family Restaurant in Jessup, and the Encore Music Festival Facebook page. Parking, $5, with a portion of the proceeds going to the Boys and Girls Club. Gates open at 3 p.m. Bring your own chairs. The Encore Music Festival, sponsored by I-95 Toyota and Scion and the Bud Light Party. Stay in town and get what you need at Code Blue Tactical, located at 192 West Cherry Street. We do embroidery, laser engraving, and various items for your memorial and fundraising needs. We also offer custom tees by Fatback Tees. Churches, come see us for your vacation Bible school tees. We have special prices for y'all. Shop Code Blue Tactical for Father's Day. We are your Father's Day headquarters. Come in and register and see us at Code Blue. We're giving away a free pair of boots each month for June, July, and August. Come see us for details. Don't forget our grand opening June the 15th at 1130. See you at Code Blue Tactical, 192 West Cherry Street, downtown Jessup. The new Piggly Wiggly store in Jessup Cherry Street Center is coming soon, and Piggly Wiggly would like to announce a hiring event for Friday, June 24th. The hiring event will take place at the Goodwill Job Connection Center, located directly behind the Goodwill store in Jessup. The event will be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please remember to bring proper ID, documents, and any resumes that have already been prepared. If you wish, you can email resume starting May 25th at jobconnections123 at gmail.com. Attention, Barbara Curry. Again, the grand opening date right now is expected to be around Piggly Wiggly's 100th anniversary on September 16, 2016. Again, Piggly Wiggly thanks Wayne County for its support. Looks forward to bringing a local hometown grocery store to Jessup. some juicy details about the Georgia Blueberry Festival, June 3rd and 4th at Goldwasser Park in Elmer. You'll find lots of sweet things to do, including the chance to see living history with a Civil War camp at Indian Village. The festival will also include a fun run, the Blueberry Jam concert and dance, pie eating contest, and a parade. Of course, there will be lots of sweet, delicious blueberries and the tasty blueberry pancake breakfast, plus arts and crafts, great entertainment, and so much more. Get all the details at GeorgiaBlueberryFestival.org. You'll be blue if you miss the annual Georgia Blueberry Festival, June 3rd and 4th.